welcome, welcome. And hey, thanks to Prelinger's Archives for fair, free use usage. I'm Walter Cronkite. Today, the 20th century presents its regular feature, Man of the Month. This month, while diplomats traveled and statesmen pondered, a frail man with a wispy beard in the drab, dug-in city of Hanoi held many of the answers to President Johnson's worldwide peace offensive. His name was Nguyen Shin Kung when he was born 75 years ago. Today, he is Ho Chi. I think that even, like, even when I hear these people talk, it's like the, the notion that this is going to go anywhere. It's like professional wrestling or a soap opera. No, no sticks, X and hammer. You'll be here next year talking about the same old shit. You know, no one's running for office, and no one here would be really be. I don't think appealable to people. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see what actually we'll see what actually happens. But I think that that's the sort of thing that people talk about and never do. It's like all these like gurus in India. They always have these like benevolent, humanistic foundations and associations that they're associated with, but those organizations never actually do anything. They talk yeah, about I think he's riding the high from his live events. Too, I think so, you know? too. And when you, he, he even talked about like the energy in the room, how happy people are to be there, that sort of thing. No, people, people are going crazy after the fact that people are... It, it's basically that hitting, that hitting number one trending sent those guys over the rainbow. I mean, you know what's so funny? Well, and people, keep saying, people keep saying number one trending, and that's a, that's a gross uh, overstatement. Yeah, it's not it number one that. trending. There is a world of a difference between the the number one watched live stream at that actual moment and right. being number one on the trending list. Because, you know, a, he only had 15,000 people watching. Number one trending is going to have millions of people. Right, 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 right. And there you go. We'll, we'll, you know, look, we'll see, we'll see what happens. It's all very interesting. It's, uh, we'll see where it goes. But like I said, what I think is this is that, and it's the, after the apocalypse, that all the skeptics go crazy. They, they all, they all went nuts. Crown T's response. I mean, everyone just went nuts, shooting themselves in the foot, asking for all this stuff. Yo, check this out, Dave. Let me, let me ask you this. So I had this idea that I was gonna go on today. And I was going to make a video that was going to be provocatively titled, and I was going to call the video, um, Based Mama Deserves Proceeds from Worski Livestream. And then it was going to say, slash, open letter to Jeremy of Unsleeved Media. And the, the, ostensibly, the, the battle plan, the game plan was as follows. I'd give it that explosive title, and then I would lay out an argument, a very simple argument at the, at the, the front to say, hey, um, yada yada yada. Uh, so that a decent alternative this is an argument that can be made, though it's an argument that I might think is the best argument ever. It's an argument that could be made. You know, yada. Basically, her activity leading up to Kilroy, all the energy around Kilroy, even though she played the heel, even though she was the enemy, that still created the narrative for people to tune in. Andy Worski's live stream is not just because of the work of Andy Worski, Stick Sands, and Hammer, Saragin, Rakan, and Richard Spencer, and Millennium Woes, but rather is the culmination of a group activity that involves all sorts of players, both the good guys, like the, like the Gemeticers, and the heels, like the based mamas of Kilroy. And then I would use that as to try and generate hits, and then we would say, then we were talking about Magic Gate briefly to say, hey, Jeremy, blah, 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 blah. I know you thought we were joking. You had no idea why, uh, why in the world you would appear on this channel, but we're no joke, and this is why. And that would be the thing. What would you think about that approach? Would that be a wise approach? I, I think that it, um, it would probably be an unwise approach um, just because, well, probably like anything else, the message, and maybe even like this broadcast, um, the message to Jeremy would be buried at the end. <laughs> and I'm not sure that he would see it. Well, no, the, whole, whole... the argument as far as like, if you just want to troll people with the base mama title, um, that might work, you know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, the argument seems a little whack. There's another one I saw where I think his name is the Constitutionalist Libertarian, very small YouTuber. Um, he lays out an argument that the, the people involved in Kraut's doxing server and uh, Base Mama and Kilroy and the way they booted people out 
could be all be that whole enterprise could be prosecuted under the RICO statute. And I thought it was I thought it was very uh, out there, but it's also a bit entertaining. The, the one that was especially for me was the inter he claims that uh, all the different Patreons, the fact that everybody's located in different states, counts as interstate commerce. I'm not really sure that that's correct. Because I thought interstate commerce couldn't really count if it's online. But. What I think would end up happening is I think the whole thing would be too small potatoes for any, any oh, yeah. prosecutor to want to get involved on the criminal front. So the only thing would be if anyone could present civil damages. And I, I think you you need somebody who has, would have civil damages, i.e. someone who... I think the, the, the person that you'd look for to have any sort of real legal argument against the, the whole Kilroy organization would be anyone who contributed $10,000 or more, honestly. Because even if you contributed $5,000, you're going to go to a lawyer. Even if you're a lawyer yourself, you're still going to say, with filing fees, with trying to prosecute an action in Phoenix, Arizona, in a county that I don't know, in a state that I don't know, what's the value of it? Why would you, you don't spend $10,000 to try and get back five. You know what I mean? You spend- Yeah, maybe maybe if you lived in Arizona, you could do a small exactly. place court. A small then you wouldn't have spent money on a hotel because you already lived there. So and, and, that would be your claim. And there's so many moving pieces because when things move through PayPal and Patreon, you have to realize that the minute you do that, there's a legal complexity of a third party in the room who's a vested interest in making sure that this debate goes nowhere. So what oftentimes you'll see is that there'll be some clause in some contract of adhesion, one of those things you just automatically click on, uh, that, that usually says things like if there's a dispute between you part, you, this party and this party, either we're not involved or if there's a dispute between you and this party and this party, you agree that the final resolution of our independent, you know, fact-finding board is, you know, settles the issue. There's all sorts of things, but like I said, well, I heard one thing nobody talked about. about. Something no one I've, I've heard talk about was that when people contributed to Kilroy and per even purchased tickets on the Kilroy website, there was they said that Dave Cullen had he made a used a custom API to basically program their own. You know how you can do PayPal purchase? Like if you ever bought something and PayPal is what they use to process the transaction. He custom programmed the ticket sales into the website. They said to, Base Mama said to avoid the 18% or 1.8% PayPal fee. And to my knowledge, the only way to get around PayPal's PayPal fee is to send it as a gift or a donation. Like money to a friend or you count as a donation. So all those tickets may actually have gone into PayPal system as donations. And if you've ever tried to sell something online and they say they accept gift only, yeah. you buy something on a forum, they'll say PayPal gift only. Right. That, they do that to avoid the fee, but you're not entitled to PayPal's guarantee in that case. Brilliant. So if you buy a good or service through that, I mean, there's a, there's a chance that she'll be able to keep all the money, I think. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, who knows? I mean, the the problem is you get to keep all that money, but your name is now dirt. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So it's a, it's it's a big price. To well, that's pay. happened anyway, and there's rumor that she put her house up, which she it, she so she actually, pro most probably used her house as collateral on a loan. Oh wow. This. It, but she went to the trouble to set up an LLC to keep Kilroy separate from her own finances, but then put her personal home up as collateral. Okay, now this little piece of hot gossip from the boys doesn't actually have a title. The CW didn't name it. This is the second time he's featured the all-knowing Dave. It sounds a hell of a lot like David Wilcock. And of course, remember in this saga, CW was sometimes thought to be Corey Good. So now here he is doing dirty deals done dirt cheap with his old buddy Omni Eros, a.k.a. David Wilcock. Recently, in one of these videos where no comments are allowed, he's amazed that the voice of one person matched the voice of somebody else he knew. I have come across that a half a dozen times and been speaking about these assumed identities and these fake avatars. And I promised you this, whomever keeps messing with my legal documents in the background, 
would be the very one that would say that I put a, my house up, but no, that hasn't happened and we're surviving. But for somebody to intentionally set somebody up, whether it's uh, making up fake stories to the IRS or to any agency of any sort is illegal. I mean, remember, I'm his whore, too. I mean, he has defamed my name so hard that there really is no coming back from it, and I knew that. <clears throat> but to have you people worship him and the people that hang out in my video manager or anywhere around my YouTube channel and try to shut me down, it would be a cold day in hell. All right, back to your show. They want to deport people. You, well, they want to deport citizens. You can't do that. You, we, okay, let's say I want to deport you. Right? I'd what say I'm if you're a terrorist, they have every right to tell you to get the hell out of America. Well, even if you accepted the money, I mean, if you let's say you have $20,000 and you want to move to the Netherlands, they're not going to let you in unless you have a job, you have some kind of skill that you can perform there it just doesn't make any sense see so that that's also part of the reason that people want to avoid getting together because when you when you get together you realize that's that's not going to happen or where it actually is like libertarianism there's a there's a famous libertarian professor named robert block and if you uh, here's an interesting thought exercise that i recommend to anybody who's a libertarian or is thinking about how to evaluate libertarian philosophy or thoughts Watch any interview with Robert Block where he's talking, a lecture by Robert Block where he's talking by himself. A lecture by Robert Block talking about libertarianism where he's talking just himself, giving a lecture, where he's being, being interviewed by someone who's pro-libertarian values. He's gonna come off as an extremely erudite, brilliant thinker, well-articulated, and his thoughts and his ideas are gonna make a whole hell of a lot of sense. They may, if you're like me. Then after you do that, and you gather your impressions about him solo and how his ideas sound in isolation, look at a bunch of interviews that he did with Sam Cedar of the Majority Report. Google Sam Cedar versus Block. And it's crazy. The minute a libertarian has to debate anyone who's a non-libertarian, a lot of these things are shown for exactly what they are. Articles of faith as divinely inspired as the, the return of, of Jesus. The real people they're talking about. You know what I mean? But don't worry, that'll work out because Otherwise, don't worry, the law that'll work be out the prostitution yeah. and everybody likes to take ecstasy. It just it never does. You know what well, I mean? Well it's like the define you know, Sargon was ridiculed for saying, you know, trying to get Spencer to say the criteria for being white. And yes. he's like, Oh, this is such a horrible thing, this is ridiculous. But what I think Sargon was trying to do is get him to to basically he, he envisions a scenario, let's say there's a war, the ethnostate's at war, which it almost certainly would be at some point with another country. So you have to do rations. And, I mean, they're only going to want the white people to get the good ration cards, right? So what? how do they figure out who is the true, you know, when purity testing inevitably happens, right. what is that criteria? And they acted like it was this crazy question that, and he, he, he used the Supreme Court, Richard Spencer used the Supreme Court child porn argument that you'll know it when you see it. Like, basically, right. but how does that have any legal, I mean, other than that one case with well, and, CP, and, I don't understand how you could do that with people. And, and what people need to realize is that when people talk about that, that argument came out of the Supreme Court, I forget who said it, it was one of them. Was Justice O'Connor? No, not even. It was a man. It was a, I know it was a man. It was an older gentleman. Uh, this goes back to the Larry, Larry Flint type of decisions. Basically, when, he, when, when that statement is, is remembered, it's not remembered as a, as a brilliant judicial teaching. It's an example of how stupid the system is because at the end of the day, it's like trying to find what's rock music. You know what I mean? Like what makes the, the return to forever with the Chick Corea and Stanley Clark, a jazz band and not a rock band. It's crazy. I mean, you can't come up with a definition that, that's gonna, that works for even rock music, like what makes rock music rock music. The notion that you're gonna do it with these, these bigger things, 
or that you're going to implement, be able to simply implement these things on that scale is just it's just ludicrous. And that 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 was their point, but no one defines it because, like I say, I point out all the time. I go, look, you know, I whatever I look like. I think if you see me on the street, you're going to say I'm a white guy, right? But I'm half Jewish and half Puerto Rican. There's a variety of reasons why the notion that I would get in and somebody else would get left out of that system doesn't work. Also, let's face facts. I mean, the people talking about why, why a lot of these white people are getting up in arms is because they've got a data set that they're pulling from that says that they're turning into the minority. So it's hard for the minority to kick everybody out. You know what I mean? It just is. I've tried. You know what I mean? It's just difficult. Yeah, the notion that you could do this in kind of any kind of peaceful process just seems completely ludicrous to me personally. I don't think that's the intention. I think that, you know, you say that, but, I mean, Spencer himself says that, you know, democracy is a fad, you know, the Constitution is just a piece of paper, you know, these things would not be done under our system. You know, he's talking about, despite saying that, you know, he doesn't want to overthrow the government, I think he means that in the legal sense, like, I'm not oh, sure, threatening the federal that. government. Well, it's the same thing with we're not violent. Well, it's, 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 the same, it's the same thing of like, you know, believe you be, 